Julian, you've obviously been doing this for, for quite a while in the UFC now. So do opportunities like this still feel special, though? Pay-per-view, International Fight Week in Vegas, is it still something special for you? I feel like this seems like the most special opportunity I've had yet to have an opponent like Michelle Watterson, a huge vet in the game, a huge name in the game, and to be in the T-Mobile. Uh, I feel like it's all just like a dream come true still to me. Nice. Sounds like you have a lot of respect for Michelle and, and, and who she is as an athlete. What, what do you think of her as an opponent? Uh, yeah, like I said, she's a vet in the game. You gotta respect her. You gotta know that she's coming in there with her best fight. Uh, she's not gonna be making any dumb decisions. She's gonna be bringing, yeah, the best her. So it's like I gotta be ready for that Saturday night. Simplicity, I think you say, striker versus grappler. Do you see it as that simple of a breakdown, or do you feel like it, you were both too well-rounded to consider it that type of a matchup? Uh, I think you can kind of see it like that a little bit, but uh, for me especially, I don't care if the fight goes to the ground. I'm just looking to do damage. I'm looking to get in there and force her into situations that she's not comfortable in, force her into making bad decisions, and uh, it doesn't matter if it goes to the ground to me. If we're on the feet on the ground, I'm going to be content as long as I'm doing damage. Very nice. You get a win here, like you said, on this big platform, this big opportunity. What's important for you? Is it looking up the rankings and like picking specific names to work your way up, or is it just – Stay busy, because I feel like you just want to fight as often as possible. Uh, for me, names have never been important. It's the numbers next to the names. Uh, if I want to be a champ, I have to beat every single one to get there. So it doesn't matter who you put in front of me, I'm taking that fight. Last thing for me, what, what type of fight do you think we see here? As you said, a, a veteran, do you think this is going to be a back and forth battle, lengthy, or is this one that you can go out and maybe not look for a submission, but get one? What kind of fight do you see? Uh, I do think I will be able to find my submission. I do think I'll be able to get my finish. Uh, I, I don't see it necessarily being a back and forth battle, but I don't see Michelle going away easy either. Julian, right here. Going off of that, uh, you said you don't expect it to be back and forth, but not putting her away. Does that mean you kind of view this as kind of a dominant performance from you? Is what to you expect? Uh, I, I think I'm expecting a dominant performance. Just the way that my camps went, I just, I've never felt so ready for a moment. I keep on saying to myself that this is my time, because I do just truly believe that at this moment. I believe that I am more than ready to walk in the cage right now, more than confident in myself and my ability, and uh, it's my time. Was it something different in this camp as opposed to previous ones that led to you kind of having this feeling for this fight specific? I think it's honestly uh, just my last few camps, uh, uh, excluding the Tabitha Ritchie camp, my last three wins, the camps have just went so perfect for me. I've really found the formula that I need with Goat Shed and Dean Thomas and just the schedule that I need and everything that I need to be ready and get my hand raised. How is it training at Goat Shed? Because we've seen the videos on social media, it seems a little different. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of chaos, but that's what a fight is. You know, you got to be ready for a fight. and uh, uh, You got to be ready for all that chaos in the fight. You got to be ready for the crowd screaming and everything like that. So that's what Goat Shed helps me provide. They got that little bit of chaos. Uh, last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Yuri? I'm actually super excited for this main event. Um, Yuri, I feel like, is someone who I've counted out on every fight that he's ever had, and he wins. So uh, I'm never counting out Yuri Prohoshka, so I'm rooting for him. <laughs> Jillian, back here. Um, you know, you've had a couple fights now at, at strawweight. Uh, you know, it seems like it's gone very well for you in terms of the cut and everything. Does part of you wish you would have dropped down a little bit sooner, like earlier in your UFC career? Um, I guess not necessarily. Uh, obvious, it's all a learning process for me. I, I got signed super young in my career, uh, age-wise and like uh, experience-wise. I was only three and two, so I feel like it's just been a learning process for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't regret it. And you fought, I mentioned there at flyweight. Uh, Michelle's considered one of the smaller fighters in the division. Um, how much of an advantage do you think that'll be? Just because you're obviously very strong. You were competing with flyweights. You know, Michelle's never fought at flyweight. I don't think she would ever fight in that weight class. Well, I guess me fighting at flyweight shows this, that I never take size into consideration. Um, I don't think if somebody's smaller, that necessarily means that they're weaker. They could be better at making decisions and just that's why they're in the game. That's why she's made it this far. So I, I feel that with myself a lot, honestly, is I don't feel like I'm necessarily one of the stronger, more athletic girls, but I'm better at making decisions than most of these girls, so it makes me feel strong to them. And just last one for me, uh, what do you think the implications are for a victory, especially a finish? Uh, you mentioned Michelle's been in the game for a while, pretty notable name. This is a pretty big card. Like, uh, I imagine you know, this has got to propel you up the rankings. Oh, that's all I'm hoping for is just keep on going up the rankings, you know? It's like... I feel like two or three more, and I should be standing across from the champion. Julian right here, straight down the middle. 
Uh, Julian, I wanted to touch back on uh, working at Team Goat Shed. We know, for example, President Awesome as a promoter and as a personality. I want to know, what is he like as a teammate and as a coach? Because obviously several fighters in UFC trust him and the work that he puts in as a teammate. Oh, yeah, President Awesome, he's all over the place. Karate combat, UFC, wherever it is, he's all over. And he's uh, an amazing person, amazing coach, and uh, I'm blessed to have him at the gym every day. And then uh, you work with Dean Thomas for a long time. We get to hear him a lot on the broadcast. Can you speak a little bit? How close is he to that guy that we hear on TV? Like, is that the kind of advice that he gives to you when he's coaching you at the gym, or do you get a different version? Dean is probably one of the smartest people I know, honestly. Like, just the way he approaches the game. I've went around the country, been to every big gym, I've talked to every coach, and there's nobody who actually treats the sport as MMA like Dean does. So many are approaching it as like boxing and jujitsu and wrestling. He's the first MMA coach that I know, and I'm so lucky. I really feel like it was just like fate that I walked into his gym when I was 16 years old. I was so blessed that it that we ended up working together. What do you think it is? Obviously, you have respect for the work he puts in and likewise, but what do you think it is about you guys as personalities? Because, you know, he's a very respected mind in the game, but you guys have just kind of had that, you know, that duo working for a long time. What do you think it is about you two that just works for so long? I think we're both just workhorses, honestly. We're both just down. Like, he would text me at any time of day, be like, yo, we're training. I'd be like, okay, I'll be there, you know? So I feel like it developed a respect between us and he just knows that I want it is ba that bad so it's like I feel like I, I, I think it is developed off the fact that we're both just workhorses thank you Jillian back here uh, we know that Michelle has a unique unique striking style blending in her karate uh, do you feel like there's a comparison that you've already had to deal with the same or is this going to be a new experience to deal with uh, it'll be a new experience in the cage. Uh, this camp, I've had a, a one of my friends, Anna Crutchfield. Uh, she's a pro fighter come out, and she, I feel like, is honestly, I want to say, a better look than Michelle. She's throwing kicks at me, karate style, giving me everything I need for this fight. And what do you think the biggest challenge or obstacle is going to be with dealing with her style? I think the biggest challenge is going to be catching her, honestly. I feel like she's going to play on the outside and throw kicks a lot, and uh, just closing that distance and staying in her face is going to be the hardest part, most challenging part. Thank you.